Time for the auction. It's all going to be boxes again this week. All right. Let's see. Four T zero one. This is the four T series auction. I've got two by faces in this under this item number. All right. So this one is an Edwards Plateau shirt, high quality raw. It is very similar to Georgetown, but it's not. As you can tell, it's not that bluish gray. It's a a lighter gray, but it's high quality stuff, and it's it it can get translucent if you get it thin enough. This is six inches by three and seven eighths. All right. And this one is Georgia Church, Coastal Plains, Flint River. Seven inches by three and five eighths. Okay. So these are just roughed out. I was going to make knives out of these. But as, um, as time ran out, or as time runs out, I offer these in the auction if I can't use them up. All right. So there you go. Just have a good look at them. There shouldn't be any defects other than slight imperfections that are common in the stones. See that little hole? It probably goes through there. Or I don't know if those are connected. But you'll there are slight imperfections. Nothing major I can see. These are both raw. So they can be heat treated. Yes, you can heat treat. A light heat treat is 350 degrees Fahrenheit. A heat treat regular normal is 400 degrees. And a high heat treat is 450 and above. I recommend low heat treat, 350 degrees for these. Okay. 350 degrees Fahrenheit for four hours after drying them out for 24 hours at 200 degrees. If you want to heat treat. All right. You don't need to. Those are high quality raw. Okay. Now I've got a bunch of flakes and stuff. And bifaces. Okay. There we go. Four T zero two. These are bifaces. I did a bunch of these on video. I don't think I did all of them on video. But a bunch were. These are mixed high quality raw shirts. Uh, Texas shirts. As far as I know. Yeah, there's no Yeah, it's all Texas shirts. These are Georgetown. Okay. The rest are Paternalis and Edwards Plateau shirts. And some are amoeba and some are not. All right, so I'm just going to quickly measure the lengths. Four inches. Three and a quarter. Three and three quarter. Three and three quarter. Four and five eighths. Three and seven eighths. Uh, three and three quarter. Four inches. Three and a half. And this one is three and a quarter. All right, so I don't know how many that was. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten by faces of various sizes, various shirts. All high quality raw. Okay, I, I term them HQR, high quality raw. So if you don't know what high quality raw is, now's your chance, like I always say. Four T zero three. This is another box of high quality raw bifaces, mostly or all Texas shirts. Some of these I did nap on video yesterday. 
so you get to see just how nice they are yeah with with high quality rock and fancy tools I can make quick work of these things and thin them down okay let's see yeah let's start measuring four and a three eighths three and a half three and a half this one is um, it's Owl Creek I believe yeah Owl Creek gray that this one is a little on the not so good side just because it's kind of chalky but it's all right yeah I would still say it's high quality all right two and seven eighths this is Georgetown I got two yeah two pieces of Georgetown in this but in this batch this one's actually a broke but it's very close to a biface let's see three and seven eighths three and three quarter a little bit more these are all uh, not all but they're like I guess they're four to one or better no I'm around four to one uh, with the thickness ratio let's see four and a quarter three and a half I hate to part with this one because I've been looking for this stuff for a long time. Finally found it. Uh, this uh, brown and tan. I see a lot of artifacts in my area made from it. Uh, three and a half. I think I got some more of it. And this one here, three and three quarter. Yeah, I broke the corner off of that one. This is like Owl Creek Yellow. It naps well. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten by faces in this one as well. Okay. Four T zero four. This is a box of high quality raw flakes, Georgetown and Texas Church. These are Georgetown flakes, high quality raw flakes. Okay, so these are all Georgetown. And the rest of these are Texas Church. Some of these are flakes that came off of the, some of these are flakes that came off the bifaces that I was doing on video. But these are flakes that came off some bifaces here. Hold on. It's not all Texas. I'm, I'm seeing some Georgia church. There's a couple of Georgia church flakes right here. That's not it. Another Georgia church flake. Kind of chunky. Or I should say meaty. Yeah, that's Georgia Chert as well. So the rest of these are Texas. Okay, so it gives you an idea. This is this lighter colored gray is Belton. Belton Chert. This one is um I think this came off the high grade raw large by face that I have for sale. Alright. Yeah, these should all nap very well. These are high grade raw flakes yeah various sizes but I tried I'm trying to offer you the stuff that does not have any curves in it and some are meaty and some are extremely thin see that so there's a variety in here and there's some that have a little bit of a curve like the bulb of percussion there some of them are like that, but I'm trying to include only the flat ones. This one is a bit curved. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I'm giving, I'm selling my my good stuff. I got a bunch of local shirts. 
so I'm, I still have a bunch of stuff to nap. But this is some of my best stuff. Um, people have asked me on the side to send them boxes of flakes uh, as starter kits. I still have material for those. I've got a couple of, of those boxes to send out. So, But I'm running low on the, the excellent stuff. So I can't I can't offer any boxes of flakes on the side other than starter material. Which will be mostly the belt and shirt stuff. If I send you starter material, it's gonna be like this. It's gonna be a light gray, kind of chalky, but easy to nap. High 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 quality raw. Alright. Four T05. Yeah, this is more of the Belton chert. High quality raw. It is dry and chalky. It can, yes, be heat treated. I recommend 400 degrees just to experiment with. And if it doesn't slick up very much, go to 450, I suppose. Or even higher. Okay, so these are spalls of the Belton chert, of high grade stuff. For this type of chert, it's high grade. Now it's going to be napping similar to keel cook, but it's not as snap and halfish. All right, keel cook snaps in half. If you look at it funny, this one will not. All right, as you can see from the spalls, they hold together very well. Okay, four and three quarter. This one is. About five and a half, you'll get about five and a half tops. This one has some cortex, but I don't find any issues with the cortex on this particular type of chert. You know, there's no dings and stuff. If you have any issues, just let me know. Four and a half. That's about five. And a smaller piece in here. This is about three and a half. Okay. All right. Four T zero six, a box of root beerish type chert raw. High, some of these are high grade and some of these are medium grade, and some of these are going to need some heat. And I got a variety. I've got three of these type of flakes. Well, this one is kind of meaty. These are thin, straight, translucent, root beerish type. Uh, let's see. Uh, 2 and a half. Or 2 and 3 quarter. Yeah, 2 and 3 quarter. About 3 and a half. I don't know if you'll be able to get it. Uh, a complete length on that one. Let's see, three, about four, and yeah, the, most of these are spalls. There's a few flakes, like I said, over here. Uh, root beerish type. It um, the true root beer looks a lot like Flint River. I think that's what they call it. No. What is that stuff? Knife River. Some of this stuff is going to resemble Knife River, but it's not going to be as reddish. Some Texas root beers have a reddish tint, and that's what I call true Texas root beer. This is root beerish, okay? It is Edwards Plateau Chert. It should nap fine in the raw state, but it can also be heat treated, but low heat, very low heat. I would recommend 300 degrees tops. Okay, unless it doesn't heat at 300 or doesn't respond to 300, you can go up to 350. But I recommend 300 maximum, even 275 in some cases, degrees Fahrenheit, if you want a heat treat. All right. Now about four and a half. It's got some, it's, all these have a little bit of cortex, okay? So just be aware. You won't be able to use the cortex part. 
four inches. This one's about five and a quarter. Uh, four and a quarter. I'm measuring the good parts. Uh, three inches for the good part. This is cortex on that side. Yeah. All right, so several pieces of this stuff. It should all fit. I overload the boxes slightly. There's almost three pounds per box, depending on how heavy the, the flint is. Or the chert. It ranges from two pounds, ten ounces, up to three pounds per box. Just so you have an idea of how much it would weigh. All right, so that's it for the box. I mean, that's it for the the items in today's auction. Okay, rules. You bid in the comment section. I will pre-populate the comment section with comments that contain the item number, a timestamp where the item appears in the video, and a short description of the item. Okay, so just look in the comment section. That's where you bid, but don't just bid randomly. Look for your item number in the comments that I put in there and reply to that comment that I put in there. Okay? I will like your comment if I see it. So your comment is your bid. All right? Just bid the dollar amount that you want to bid. Okay? Uh, sometimes comments are not always visible. Yeah, that's an important little distinction there. I might not see your comment. But if I do, I will like it. It may take a while to like your comment, but as the time approaches the end of the auction, I will check more frequently. Yeah, so don't get too panicky if I don't like your comment right away. And sometimes it takes me up to an hour or so to respond in the beginning of the auction. As it gets closer to the end of the auction, I check a lot more frequently, like every five minutes or so. All right. Try not to bid at the last minute. Yeah, I'm using YouTube's time tracker and it's not always accurate. It can be up to two minutes off. Please be aware of this. Shipping is free in the U.S. Yay, free. It's not free for international bidders. It's discounted, but not free. I will add shipping costs to your bid if you win, if you're international. Okay? International rates often change as well. I might need to charge more than this that you see here. Okay? Canada usually is cheaper than any other place I send to. So it's a little bit less, all right? I will provide tracking numbers. I accept PayPal, Venmo, Cash App, checks, or money orders. I can also email you an electronic invoice that you can pay with a card. Note, I cannot charge your credit or debit card on my end. So I don't keep track of anybody's card numbers or anything like that. I don't have anything like that on file anymore. I used to be able to do it, but security measures through all these charging uh, systems don't allow me to charge you on my end you have to charge on your end that helps to avoid fraud right right winners will be announced starting at 901 p.m eastern time which means it ends at 8 central 7 mountain or 6 pacific it starts at 9 let's see uh Winners will be announced starting at 9.01. Yeah, it starts at, I think it's 3 p.m. now, Eastern. Yeah, 3 p.m. Eastern because it starts at 2 p.m. Central, which is my time. All right, auction from 3 p.m. Eastern to 9 p.m. Eastern. So pay attention to your time zone, please. It's different depending on your time zone. I will reply to your winning bid with this cut and paste. Sold, thank you, the item number, the price. Please email me your name, address, etc. to jackcrafty2 at gmail.com. Yeah. Um, I have no way of notifying you that you've won other than in the comment section. I will notify you in the comment section under your winning comment. You must then send me your name, your YouTube name, so I know who you are if, if it's different, your address, and preferred method of payment. Okay. There's no private messages in YouTube. Uh, I'm not going to be able to look you up some other way to remind you that you've won. Um, I will announce the winners in the comments section under your comment. 
that that is the winning bid. If you have the winning bid, I will respond to that with a little heart-like and then this cut and paste thing. If you're new, this is very important. If you're if you if you've bid before and you've won, uh, I have your information on file as far as name and address and all that. So, uh, and your preferred method of payment. So, uh, this is not as vital. But if you're new, this is extremely important. Please email me if you won. Okay. These are my cheat notes. There is a better description in the, of the auction in the description box below. Please look at my previous auctions to see how they work. If you're not able to reply or comment, you will not be able to bid. I can enter your bid for you if you email me. Yeah, some people, that's the only way they can get their bids in. Auction 3J has a demo on how to bid. I used my tablet. Okay, so you can type in Jack Crafty Auction 3J and it should pop up that video, right? And I think in the comments section, there's a pinned comment that will bring you right to the demo of the auction. So you can see how I navigate and how I can bid on my tablet. And hopefully you'll be able to learn how to bid from that if you have no idea on how to bid. All right. Okay. So I hope you like this week's items. Uh, they're all boxes of stuff. I did make a bunch of points, but they're all side projects and gifts so uh it's probably going to be that way until christmas and yes i will have an auction on christmas day on monday i'm not going to change my dates at all on the auctions anymore they're all going to be on mondays no matter what okay so i hope you guys had a good weekend that's it and good luck <laughs>